Today we are going to talk about uh, a model of the Indian monsoon. Uh, I call it a mechanistic model because it is not really a theoretically closed model. It is because as I, as I said in the, in the last uh, <clears throat> lecture, that for the regional monsoon, the, the energy balance and the angular momentum balance cannot be closed uh, uh, very nicely. And therefore we cannot really develop a very closed uh, uh, kind of uh, model, a theoretical model, but uh, uh, we, 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 we develop a model that, that will explain all the, uh, all the features of the monsoon. Uh, and that is sort of a more of a conceptual model rather than uh, a theoretical model. <clears throat> uh, so, uh, <clears throat> so let us, uh, uh, to, uh, before we start uh, uh, going into the model, let us just recap a few uh, different major features of the monsoon. Uh, as, I, as, uh, as we discussed, the Mon Indian monsoon is part of the global ITCZ uh, and, uh, and the low level, it is associated with the wind convergence and which creates the large scale organized uh, uh, rainfall and cloudiness. And, uh, and it has a seasonality in summer, uh, um, we have the Indian monsoon is uh, the summer part of this uh, global ITCZ. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, and uh, as a result, uh, the, 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 uh, the Indian monsoon it has a very strong seasonal cycle. Uh, and it's, uh, it has, uh, it, during uh, summer, we have uh, a lot of rain and winter is uh, uh, relatively dry. So wet summer and dry winter is the seasonality in terms of rainfall. And that is again shown here in terms of uh, uh, in terms of the mean rain during June, June, July, August, and December, January, February. June, July, August is very wet, and then December, January, February is very dry, uh, <clears throat> and that is the kind of seasonality. So seasonality is an important part of monsoon, uh, and it has it is associated with the low level uh, uh, cross equatorial flow and southwesterly jet. Um, producing a cyclonic vorticity at the low level and the upper level the wind divergence produces a, a, a cyclonic vorticity and the easterly jet. So, and this is, is essentially associated with a very deep vertical uh, circulation. And that, that deep vertical circulation is our overturning meridional monsoon, uh, meridional uh, circulation or meridian headly cell, monsoon headly cell. Um, and this is, of course, the convectively coupled. The winds are very strongly associated with the uh, rainfall. So these are these are things we have discussed. But I'm just recapping so that uh, you, uh, one, uh, we can relate uh, uh, with the theory. Uh, so um, and of course, uh, the other important part of monsoon is the the, the onset. The onset is rather abrupt, and uh, withdrawal is rather uh, rather gradual. Uh, but that abrupt onset is also one of the important features of monsoon and that we need to explain. So any model of Indian monsoon therefore must uh, explain, uh, must uh, uh, be based on the fact that there is a convectively coupled, convectively coupled system. So therefore the rainfall and the winds are, 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 must be part uh, of intrinsic part of the coupling, coupled uh, system. And the theory must, uh, must, uh, must be based on that assumption and then we have to be able to say, uh, 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 <clears throat> explain the seasonal reversal of the winds, uh, the, uh, uh, the wet uh, uh, and uh, wet summer and dry winter, and and we must be able to explain also the uh, deep baroclinic uh, first baroclinic vertical structure and abrupt onset. So, uh, so these are some uh, these are the major features of the monsoon which it, it, it model uh, must explain. <clears throat> So uh, uh, to explain, to, to describe the monsoon in, uh, and, and, and any theory, uh, to, uh, 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 we have to uh, devise, uh, uh, the monsoon is a very large scale circulation, uh, cir I mean the rainfall as well as circulation. And somehow uh, we, should be, we should have some indices of monsoon so that we can, uh, we can um, verify the theory uh, and um, uh, 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 or the model uh, to explain them. So basically we use uh, several indices of monsoon for this matter. One of the uh, two, in the, uh, two types of indices are generally used. One is of course the rainfall index and that is the main all India rainfall 
is, is one of our major index and that, that because rainfall is most of the important uh, important uh, parameter for users and uh, also for the drivers uh, drive, dry, uh, driving of the monsoon rainfall is important therefore rainfall makes a important index of monsoon so this all india rainfall is one of the important monsoon uh, index of monsoon and that we will use often uh, other indices are also uh, used often uh, uh, the, uh, because the monsoon is a convectively coupled system, the rainfall and the winds are related. Therefore, it, is, it should be possible to describe the monsoon also with large scale circulation rather, uh, 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 equally well. And therefore, people have devised the large scale circulation indices and the two, two such indices I refer here. Uh, one was devised by Webster and uh, Young sometime back. This is the vertical wind shear index. So you take the wind shear above uh, uh, in the upper atmosphere uh, and the difference between the wind, uh, winds, uh, wind in the upper and the lower atmosphere. So the vertical shear of the wind averaged over this region is, is, uh, is used as an index of the monsoon. The philosophy behind is that the, 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 since the, 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 uh, the winds are driven by the heating associated the rain, it has the first baroclinic structure that means upper level divergence and lower level convergence. Therefore, the zonal winds at the lower level must be opposite to the upper level uh, winds. And therefore, a vertical shear will uh, sort of uh, uh, encapsulate uh, that, uh, that response of the heating to uh, 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 of the of the heating to uh, um, the response of the winds uh, uh, to the heating so that's one way the other way uh, another more uh, another index that we uh, described some time back was a, an equivalent but a different uh, instead of vertical winds here we proposed a meridional wind shear is more suited because we have this uh, uh, this uh, 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 the, uh, the, uh, the monsoon headly circulation. So if in the, in the north south direction, it is the overturning circulation. Therefore, the meridional winds in one direction in the, in the uh, clearly in the uh, one direction at the low level and upper, uh, other direction in the upper level. Therefore, if I differ, uh, differ, uh, <coughs> take a, a, make an index of differences of the meridional wind uh, at upper level and the lower level, that would give me a good in a good uh, uh, index of the monsoon headly circulation, and that is uh, uh, that is uh, why we, we 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 use this as a monsoon uh, um, uh, as a meridional wind shear index. Uh, as a difference between the upper and lower level winds, uh, uh, winds uh, <coughs> uh, average over this region. So this is called monsoon headly index. So these two index, there are other indices there will also have been uh, have been proposed by several other people, and uh, I will not go into uh, all the details. But uh, these were done in sort of in uh, in nineties, and uh, and uh, when the data um, was not uh, very long, uh, not long data of the rainfall and the winds were not very available. But now. There are more uh, uh, rain, rain, longer rainfall data as well as the wind data are available now from the reanalysis. So recently, we sort of looked at uh, the re-examined these uh, these wind and the um, uh, large scale wind indices, and um, and again there are about four four different uh, wind indices that we examined and looked at how they related to the uh, rainfall. And uh, it turns out that the MHI and uh, is one which correlates pretty well with the rainfall, which was uh, 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 found earlier also. Same, uh, the others, uh, there are others also reasonably well correlate, but the Webster and Yang index somehow does not correlate very strongly with, uh, this has been known, but it has this other use, uh, uh, the, the, uh, uh, the, uh, the Webster and Yang index is a very large scale index. and. Uh, uh, for teleconnections of some of the S with ENSO and others, this index is is is, is, is reasonably uh, um, good. Uh, but uh, it turns out that what we find is that uh, there are certain limitations of the large scale indices because if you look at uh, the it is definitely monsoon is coupled, but the coupling is not like you know hundred percent. Suppose if you take the winds, wind, uh, wind, uh, wind, and uh, there are in addition to this coupling, there are other things that affect the monsoon. Therefore, uh, uh, if you do a, a coupled uh, um, uh, EOF or uh, the of the winds, uh, 
uh, and rainfall at low level in the upper level in the and the rainfall it turns out that the, the dominant mode of variability explains only about 25% of the variance and therefore uh, therefore the that uh, makes it uh, 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 for 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 rainfall uh, for looking at rainfall variability uh, the wind indices may not be uh, good but wind indices have their own other um, other use and that also we will uh, um, uh, i mean uh, uh, can be used for various other 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 use for teleconnections and other things so so we so there are certain limitations of the wind index but it is it is useful useful for um, for studying certain aspects of monsoon so now let us start with uh, 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 this model. Uh, now, what is the classical model of monsoon? The classical model has uh, monsoon has been what is known as a large scale land sea breeze. What is a land sea breeze? When the land gets heated up during day, uh, uh, the coastal region gets heated up. Uh, uh, and so uh, uh, by evening, the land becomes hotter than the um, in the, in the, the ocean and therefore the in the evening the winds uh, <clears throat> moves from ocean to the land and in the morning again land cools down and then um, then uh, 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 then land becomes uh, 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 becomes cooler than the uh, neighboring ocean and therefore the winds flow from land to the uh, ocean so this is this is known uh, in the coastal regions, but now on a larger scale, the, suppose in a continent like India. Uh, so in the, during summer, uh, what can uh, what can happen is that this, uh, this since this land has a very low heat capacity, this uh, the solar radiation will heat up land very fast, and therefore land will become very hot. So on the the land hot land will produce a low pressure area over land, but the ocean will not heat up uh, that fast, and because of its large heat capacity, therefore ocean will remain cooler relatively, and therefore there will be a high pressure area over the ocean. Therefore uh, uh, during summer, the winds will move from ocean to the land and thereby producing cross equatorial flow and southwesterly. So it is like a land, uh, land sea breeze on a very large scale. Similarly, in the winter, the uh, land will cool down much faster um, and the ocean will still retain that heat and remain hotter relatively. And therefore, uh, uh, therefore, um, there will be high pressure over land and a low pressure over ocean and therefore the winds will then move from land to the ocean and again due to Coriolis force, it will become not sterile. So, in a way, the surface heating can explain the, uh, the seasonal variation of the surface winds, uh, uh, but this model cannot explain the vertical structure of the wind at at, at upper level uh, uh, or the um, uh, so and and the deep vertical structure uh, of the uh, of the monsoon circulation also there is one issue that this land sea uh, uh, contrast the land remaining cool uh, does not sustain during the monsoon season it turns out that after the onset before the onset the land becomes hot there is no doubt about it and therefore it produces a low pressure over land and, but after the onset, if there is a large scale rain over the land, the land cools down and then land remains cooler during the monsoon season. In fact, if we, pay, if we look at the mean, mean temperature of uh, surface skin temperature uh, uh, during July, for example, over uh, land, it is cooler than the, uh, cooler than the ocean in this, uh, in this, to the south. Uh, in the July, August also, it is similar to that. And in general, that happens uh, uh, not only over India, but also in this, uh, uh, in the, um, in the South, in the South China and, and the regions there. So, uh, so what happens is, uh, therefore, the, this land ocean contrast is not maintained during the monsoon. Then how does the monsoon wind can sustain? So therefore, that theory Cannot, uh, cannot actually, the surface temperature gradient theory cannot uh, sustain the monsoon during the monsoon period, uh, monsoon, uh, during the monsoon season. So, and another, uh, the other thing is that uh, 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 the vertical structure, it cannot explain. Uh, 
So why does it rain for actually, why does the, uh, the land cools? The land cools because once the, uh, before the onset, of course, the land is very hot, uh, very hot. And as soon as the rain falls, uh, there will be a lot of evaporation. And the evaporation will cool down the land. And then, of course, it will soak up the, uh, soak up the uh, 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 rain and retain soil moisture for some time and then the uh, then 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 again as the, as the uh, if there is a break in the rain the solar radiation will uh, will essentially evaporate the uh, instead of heating the land it will uh, the energy goes in evaporating the uh, the soil moisture and and therefore not increase the temperature of the land and therefore land remains uh, cooler and uh, and that is what uh, uh, what makes uh, uh, and then again another spell of rain comes again it uh, uh, it soaks up uh, soaks up um, uh, um, rain and therefore again the, when the sun comes out the, uh, the solar energy goes in um, in essentially evaporation and, and rather than uh, rather than hitting the temperature so therefore during the monsoon season relatively uh, the land remains relatively cooler it also cannot explain the vertical structure of the um, of the deep vertical structure of the monsoon re region. So, the, if the surface temperature gradient was the only driving force, then um, how is that uh, heating uh, uh, is communicated to the atmosphere? It can it is communicated by uh, turbulent mixing, and that can happen. The surface uh, heat, uh, heat fluxes can affect only the boundary layer. Beyond that. The surface turbulence cannot mix the uh, uh, the the air from below uh, to the pre atmosphere, and therefore no heating in the upper atmosphere really. And so um, therefore the vertical structure of heating will be surface temperature will be exponentially decreasing up to the uh, top of the uh, uh, top of the boundary layer, and therefore. Uh, and vertical uh, and the, and the, from the thermodynamic equation, if you see that the vertical velocity uh, in a zonal mean sense, uh, on, on, a, on a time mean sense, uh, vertical uh, uh, velocity is proportional to the heating. And if there is no heating, there should not be any vertical velocity. Therefore, what will happen is that if the surface temperature gradient was the only driving uh, force, then uh, uh, then uh, then the circulation will be confined to the boundary layer and there will not be any any deep circulation in the upper atmosphere and that cannot explain what we see so therefore surface temperature gradient is inadequate to explain the uh, explain the vertical structure as well as maintenance of the monsoon during the season now let us go back if we leave that behind then we have to ask what can explain so one of the important thing is that we know it is a convectively coupled system once the convectively coupled if we if we, if we accept that it is a convectively coupled system we have to introduce the rain as an integral part of this model therefore integral part of driving the winds and and therefore monsoon model uh, 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 the uh, rainfall must be an integral part of the monsoon model. So this in, uh, rainfall is integral part because the, the, the circulation is essential to bring and converge the moisture to sustain the deep clouds uh, and produce rain. While the rain produce, uh, uh, rain is essential uh, for producing the heating and intensifying the circulation. So therefore there is a co uh, uh, um, cooperative uh, cooperation between the, the rain and the winds and, and that cooperation keeps maintaining the winds and that is uh, uh, so so with the convective coupling uh, um, uh, coupling accepted we can assume that it is the rain heating that drives the uh, drive the circulation not the surface temperature heating and that if one accept that so that that is that is already we have we have known that there is a lot of rain and therefore this rain can drive these winds but the, and the, what is the structure of heating associated with these rains the structure of heating associated with the convective uh, deep moist convective uh, clouds is is like this it is maximum at the middle atmosphere somewhere and and pretty uh, 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 weak at the bottom and the top so when it is maximum the vertical velocity is also maximum over there and that vertical velocity is is what we see in the observations is the vertical velocity is maximum in the middle atmosphere and that is consistent with 
a heating vertical structure of heating uh, associated with uh, moist convection. So therefore, if I assume that, uh, assume uh, if I if I uh, uh, start with the fact that, that the winds are driven by the uh, by the latent heat release uh, 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 um, uh, in the rain, uh, uh, and 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 then. Uh, then the vertical structure follows uh, uh, um, uh, automatically. So, so with that, we can see that if that is a kind of a vertical structure, what we'll, we can expect is that, uh, uh, that um, suppose we have a land and now we have, a, we have rainfall over this region uh, and this uh, uh, low, low rain, uh, low pressure is produced not in the surface, but in the atmosphere itself. Uh, uh, and, um, and, and, and that has a deep structure in that case, there will be low level convergence and, there, and that converge, converge there will go up and then there will be divergence. And if there is no rotation, it will simply converge into that land area and then go diverse in this. But if there is a rotation, this rotation will then produce low levels, um, cross equatorial flow and southwesterlies and upper level divergence will produce, uh, produce, uh, produce uh, uh, these, these anticyclones, anticyclonic, uh, uh, circulation at the upper level and the cyclonic circulation at the lower level. So, therefore, uh, if I assume that the rainfall, uh, the heating associated with the rainfall is the primary driver, then uh, the circulation uh, becomes easily understandable. And that is what the uh, Gill model said that, uh, that and, 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 and uh, that is what I, I discussed, uh, described earlier that uh, if we assume that heating that produces a, a baroclinic mode vertical structure and the low level circulation associated with that uh, will be something like this. And this is essentially, we can actually calculate that um, analytically as we discussed. So therefore it is consistent with the fact that the, uh, the low level winds are, uh, are, 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 are driven essentially by the deep heat source. Now um, in, uh, that is produced uh, not just the surface it's surface it's a heating gradient. It is the heating gradient uh, deep uh, uh, not south gradient of the deep heat source. Now uh, and that is is what makes our uh, uh, sort of uh, um, uh, um, uh, sort of uh, the main component of our model. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, so, epipetal heat source is the uh, uh, due to precipitation is therefore important part of explaining the monsoon circulation. However, we'll still need to explain how is it linked to the onset. Uh, uh, so, so, and what causes the northward migration of the ITCZ um, to about 25 degrees uh, 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 in the Indian monsoon region and establishment of the ITCZ after the onset. Uh, <clears throat> so. Uh, that is actually related to this uh, uh, heating. So therefore, uh, uh, um, again, these are the, so, so let me try to, these, are, this, these few points we have already discussed. Now let us try to discuss if this model can this, uh, ex, uh, um, uh, um, ex, uh, explain the abrupt, uh, abrupt onset and withdrawal of the monsoon and the length of the rainy season. So, uh, in fact, this, uh, if you look at the, 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 onset, the progression of the onset from the climatological mean data and the, uh, and the steam function, in fact, this, uh, uh, the vertical velocity um, between 20th May to 30th May, uh, 31st May and, uh, and 1st June to 10th June, there is a big jump and that is when the onset takes place. And now, how does it happen? Uh, why there is a uh, the, uh, the, for, 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 for a long time, the ITCG remains about five degrees north, five to five to between five and 10 degrees north, and it is not able to move forward. But, uh, but around the, ten, uh, around, uh, the onset, uh, the ITC becomes most intense north of uh, uh, 10 degrees north and or around 10 degrees north, and then starts propagating to the north. And that is when the onset takes place. So, and this can be explained with this model that we am proposing, um, where uh, if I change these, uh, uh, the, the classical model by a sim uh, small modification of the classical model, instead of saying that the north-south surface temperature gradient forces the monsoon, it is forced by marginal gradient of the tropospheric heating 
that drives the monsoon circulation. So the the meridional gradient of the tropospheric heating is of course a manifest in today meridional gradient of the tropospheric temperature itself. Heating is something that we cannot uh, sort of measure on a day-to-day uh, -day basis, uh, um, not a uh, not a directly measurable quantity. You can de derive derive this. Uh, uh, you can make a lot of measurements and then finally de deduce this, uh, but. Uh, uh, but temperature is something that we can me measure and the, it results into the temperature, tropospheric temperature, which is warmer and that tropospheric temperature gradient can be a surrogate for meridional gradient of the tropospheric heating and that tropospheric temperature gradient can therefore be used as a driver for the uh, uh, monsoon winds. And that we can see um, from uh, uh, from the climatological uh, tropospheric temperature, if we look at uh, the June to September tropospheric temperature, this is from 700 millibar to about 200 millibar. If I uh, just uh, uh, average, average the tropospheric temperature uh, and, uh, and, and, and plot it uh, over the globe, it is over the monsoon region where there is the largest uh, heating, uh, largest temperature, tropospheric temperature, which is essentially a result of this heating that is happening there. Uh, so, uh, this tropospheric temperature gradient is what is associated with these winds. And, and that is definitely convectively coupled. If we plot that tropospheric temperature and the winds, this is actually shows very good correlation between how this, uh, uh, the, uh, the cyclonic vorticity is, is going around this. Uh, it, in fact, if you look, if you remember, when I plot, uh, so the convective coupling with the rainfall, rainfall has certain centers of action and it is a little bit broken up, but here the tropospheric temperature is a much more smoother field and that gives us uh, uh, the uh, relationship with the winds are much more stronger with this tropospheric temperature uh, field. And, uh, and therefore it gives us a basis to, uh, uh, basis to uh, develop this theory. Uh, uh, so, uh, so how does it happen? Um, uh, this happens because uh, 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 how does the onset take place now? Uh, so uh, the onset, I believe, is essentially is, is related to the change in the tropospheric temperature gradient. Now, why is that? That is because um, uh, uh, because in the, in, in the before the onset, the temperature gradient, the troposphere was hotter to the uh, south and cooler to the so the winds were moving from this uh, from north to south. Uh, and but at this at the time of onset, the monsoon, the tropospheric temperature becomes warmer to the north and colder to the south. Therefore, the winds will then move from south to the wind. And that is when the wind reversal will take place. And the heat source will get established in the north. So large scale heat source, if gets established in the north relative to the south, then the winds will move from the south to the north. And that is when the onset will take place. Onset means the reversal of the winds has to start. And, uh, and, the, and the heat source has to be established in the, in the north. And that is the uh, criterion. And how does it actually happen? In the May, at, in May, the surface heating, uh, uh, heating of land produces surface cross equatorial flow. And that we have seen. Uh, but, but a large scale divergence uh, uh, above makes the wind at, at about 850 millibar. Uh, from the north and northwest in the in the continent, uh, because there is some sort of a divergence and uh, subsidence going on in the uh, uh, over the land, and therefore, even though there are winds are going from the south to the uh, uh, from the cross equatorial flow is coming into the continent, uh, it's not able to produce convection because there is a uh, subsidence, and uh, but above the therefore above the boundary layer, the winds are still not southwesterly, and they are from the north. And that is why the winds have not moved and their cyclonic vorticity has not been set up over the uh, above the boundary layer. And so onset will happen when the winds will become uh, uh, become um, become uh, southwesterly uh, above the boundary layer in the free atmosphere. And that will happen only when the tropospheric heating, the heating in, uh, has, has moved to the north. And that is why we can say that onset will take place when the north-south gradient of the temperature, uh, tropospheric temperature, will become positive. And, and then when again it becomes negative, then the heat source will move to the south and therefore the winds have to be 
change, uh, uh, change direction. And therefore, we can consider polythene withdrawal. So, and, uh, and this is what happens. So in the, in the, in the, in, in uh, at 850 millibar, uh, the winds are uh, in May, the winds are southwesterly in the eastern part, and they bring they bring moisture to the northeast and produces rain here. But there is no rain in this no rain in this region because the winds are actually there is divergence. There is a lot of divergence in this region, large scale divergence, and that divergence actually uh, 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 um, uh, um, uh, because of that divergence, winds are also from the north, uh, and that uh, 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 does not allow. Uh, convection to take place. And this only when, uh, only when the onset takes place, this is figure, uh, this changes. So this onset takes place when this north-south temperature gradient uh, changes sign uh, around zone. This is roughly I have shown you, I'll show you exactly when it happens and then remains positive during this period. And then again, again turns, uh, uh, um, uh, turns to south. So therefore, we can define on set, mm -mm. if I take the troposphere temperature uh, uh, average over this box and the one box to the north and another box to the south and plot the uh, uh, troposphere temperature gradient, the climatological mean gradient over the whole year, around June 1, it changes sign. And that is when the, the heat source has moved to the north. Uh, <clears throat> How that heat source has moved to the north, I'll come back to that. In a, uh, and then, then it remains uh, positive. And then again, somewhere around the end of September, early October, it moves, uh, becomes negative. And that is when the withdrawal. And therefore, once I can specifically define this uh, onset and withdrawal uh, exactly, then the, uh, the period between them is called, can be called as the length of the rainy season. So now we have a we have a we have a uh, we have an objective way of defining onset and withdrawal um, and, uh, and 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 the length of the rainy season and uh, and this is something I will come back to that at this point I have plotted two other things where this is the uh, absolute vorticity uh, uh, latitude at which the absolute vorticity becomes zero uh, so. At the time of onset, the absolute vorticity is uh, become zero at about uh, 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 at about three degrees or four degrees north. That can happen only if the large scale there is a large scale circulation of the cyclonic vorticity to the north, and that is when uh, 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 that can happen only if the heat source is to the north, and that is. Uh, that is, uh, and it has also an important, uh, important uh, consequence. I mean, in, important relation with the onset uh, mechanism. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll just uh, mention that in a minute. That is why I just wanted to uh, mention it here. I'll come back to that in a minute. So, uh, 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 so therefore, our new model allows us to define onset and withdrawal in a more objectively. Uh, it is objective because it is related to the heat source. It is large scale heat source, and is not we are not making any any changing the large scale heat source going to the north and changing the direction of the winds, and so therefore it is basically uh, fundamentally related to the seasonality of the monsoon. So. Uh, 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 this makes that uh, that the, 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 uh, it make it, it, is, it also tells us that the length of the rainy season need not, need not be fixed at uh, at uh, uh, um, um, June one and uh, and uh, and withdrawal at thirty uh, thirtieth of uh, September. It can change from year to year, which is also an important part of monsoon actually. But operationally, since it cannot be used that way, therefore. The operationally people have used that June to September. Actually, physically, uh, this, the, the rainy season keeps changing from year to year. And that is an important variability because that amount of rainfall during the monsoon season can, can change from year to year, partly because the season itself has changed. And um, change, uh, season itself has changed. And, uh, uh, and that is an important part to understand the dynamics of the monsoon also. Uh, okay, okay, quickly. Oh. Uh, sir, in the classical land sea breeze circulation, you have mentioned there is no vertical structure. That is, there is absence of low level convergence and upper level divergence. Right. But in realistically, uh, in the land, it is warm. So the thickness of the atmosphere, like between the levels of the pressure levels, it will be more 
thicker than over the ocean so obviously at the upper levels there will be high will be forming so uh, at the end there will be upper levels no uh, no no how how the high uh, yes upper level there will be high right right go ahead uh, uh, so why you uh, mention there is no vertical structure in the land no, so that is that is because uh, that is because uh, uh, because the heating that is what i was trying to explain to the uh, professor narsimha that uh, this uh, surface heating has to heat the atmosphere unless there is a heat the atmosphere is heated then there will not be vertical vertical velocity if there is no vertical velocity then the surface will have to, uh, the uh, circulation has to be limited to where the vertical velocity can be non zero so and that is what i i, I mentioned here uh, uh, in one of the uh, uh, figures here so um, uh, uh here so wherever it is this 2 km is because the surface is still uh, you know sort of turbulent and therefore that is the kind of average uh, uh, average uh, uh, depth of the uh, depth of the boundary layer and up to that level it can mix through the turbulent uh, turbulent processes and therefore and it will exponentially decay maximum heating near the surface and then it will decay and uh, and then there will be uh, little or no heating at the top uh, above that and therefore only there only there will be radiative radiative heating the radiative heating is basically like cooling in the atmosphere and then on a, on a large on a, on a time mean time means uh, sense so uh, the uh, uh, therefore uh, there cannot be any vertical velocity and therefore there is no uh, there, there will not be any and this has been this has been uh, uh, has been uh, in a model model also uh, you can do a model model linear model study and then then it will show you that that is what it will happen um, so uh, but in a, in a, in a given in a small place like in a somewhere there may be there be uh, uh, there can be uh, uh, the boundary layer may be little to, uh, little higher than in another place boundary layer may be little lower but on the average this is what the uh, high, uh, i have just Uh, symbolically mentioned that two kilometer is roughly the boundary layer, and beyond that there will not be uh, there will not be uh, much of a circulation. Okay, sir. So, so following to the Tibetan plateau heating thing, yeah, uh, I read in uh, one paper by Boos et al. Uh, yeah, he, uh, his work based on a simulation. He mentioned that uh, removing the Tibetan plateau, the monsoon circulation is still strong. but if we remove the himalayan topography the monsoon circulation is dying out like the intensity is very less so yeah mm. well uh, uh, that is a sort of uh, uh, question uh, um, uh, there are issues about that study i i i cannot discuss in great detail but uh, he has two points one is that uh, there are two effects of the topo uh, himalayan uh, uh, the tibetan plateau and himalayan topography has uh, two effect on monsoon one is i'm going to discuss that uh, towards the end can i leave it at that and then i'll come back to that because sure. towards the end i am going to talk about it okay sure, okay okay theek hai all right so so let us then move forward uh, uh, so with this model you can actually monitor this uh, monitor the uh, onset Uh, and uh, 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 on set on a, on a sort of real time basis because today your analysis uh, uh, it, uh, <clears throat> the uh, the, um, uh, uh, the operational analysis uh, available almost in real time and you can monitor it in fact we have been doing that for this year's monsoon and uh, uh, my colleagues have just plotted uh, what is happening to the atmospheric temperature this year and this is this is the tropospheric temperature gradient between these two boxes uh, 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 as defined earlier and uh, uh, um, and from two different analysis era 5 uh, analysis and gfs this is ncep and this is from era and both of them actually i didn't uh, um, uh, match pretty well so the tropospheric temperature actually this year uh, um, uh, crossed the zero it became positive but did not sustain so to, to, for to onset to happen the tropospheric temperature must cross uh, uh, zero become positive and sustain for about 3 4 days or 5 days and then we can consider it a, 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 an onset because large scale heating has then uh, then, uh, then established and uh, to the north and sustain and uh, it did not happen it, it about a few days uh, uh, it, it 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 for one day it crossed and then 
went down or remained close to zero, and now it has sustained. It has come back. So uh, and uh, and so the monsoon onset, uh, although IMD has not defined, I believe that monsoon onset has just taken place or will take place in a day or two. Uh, so that is uh, 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 so my 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 uh, my criterion will be that let the, uh, you have to see sometimes in the pre monsoon due to various uh, the extra tropical systems as i have mentioned uh, sometimes it crosses but it does not sustain uh, uh, but uh, but once it sustains for about th three or four days then the uh, monsoon uh, resource has established once it is established it will be self sustaining and that is when we can consider it as a uh, onset and uh, so this 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 can be done on a re real time basis and sort of now casting we can do of the uh, onset onset now this definition of uh, onset and withdrawal and the length of the rainy season also gives us a, a, a mechanism about, about how uh, we can uh, relate this uh, how uh, it, it, can, it allows us another uh, pathway through which certain teleconnections can take place for example the teleconnection through uh, we have discovered a, a different pathway uh, which we, the, through which the el nino and southern oscillation can uh, influence the monsoon for example if you take the length of the rainy season every year, so because we have the data and from troposphere temperature, we can find out when it crosses positive to the positive and when they cross back to the negative, find out the length of the rainy season uh, or the num in terms of days. And every year you do that. And so you have a time series of length of the rainy season. And then you correlate that time series with the temperature over the whole globe. If you do that, you get a signal uh, which is very similar to the pattern of sea surface temperature, which is associated with El Nino itself. So El Nino is defined by a, a sort of a, a El Nino index is a, a sea surface temperature anomaly, anomaly averaged over, uh, over this box called Nino 3 box. And if I take the correlation of that time series with SST everywhere, we get this pattern, which is the pattern that is associated with the El Ninos. So, and this pattern is very much similar uh, uh, to this. In other words, that length of the tiny rain is the, uh, of monsoon, which is associated with the monsoon rainfall, is strongly associated with the, uh, with the and this comes from tropospheric temperature. And this uh, uh, is strongly associated with the, which is, of course, we know that El Nino and monsoon are related, but this gives us a way by which it affects the monsoon to understand a way in uh, by which the uh, uh, El Nino affects the monsoon. How does it affect the monsoon? If we look at the tropospheric temperature, this is what I was mentioning uh, just a few minutes ago. So suppose I take the tropospheric temperature associated with the El Nino events. If I take, take a, a lot, uh, several El Nino events and se uh, several El Anina events, and take the difference between the tropospheric temperature during the uh, the, uh, the month of May, in the uh, uh, in the beginning of the uh, just before the onset. There we see that the tropospheric temperature is a negative anomaly during the El Nino. Yes, there is a large scale negative anomaly sitting on this. This is the place where you you have this uh, the Tibetan plateau heating and all that. That is what I was mentioning. So. This uh, uh, tropospheric, uh, so, uh, and even if you take the after the onset also during uh, September month, uh, also it has the same kind of uh, anomaly sitting over there. So that means that El Nino produces a, a persistent, slowly varying, persistent tropospheric, large scale tropospheric uh, temperature anomaly in the northern part of India and southern USA. And these therefore affects our north south temperature gradient. And that temperature gradient can affect our onset and withdrawal and thereby affect the, uh, affect the uh, length of the rainy season. Uh, uh, so how does that actually onset takes place? It onset the abruptness uh, of the onset comes from the fact that, uh, that, uh, uh, that it is associated with it is something called a moist symmetric instability. Uh, 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 and uh, what happens uh, 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 is that this subsidence, as I mentioned, is inhibiting the convection to the north. And as a result, the ITCC cannot become vigorous uh, north of about five degrees north uh, 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 because of this, uh, uh, this uh, 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 inhibition. 
So something is required uh, to break this inhibition, uh, the subsidence that is happening on the large scale in uh, on the on the on the continental area. Uh, so. Uh, so that uh, to, what can uh, what can break this barrier is is some some instability. If an instability produces a large vertical organized vertical uh, uh, motion, that uh, uh, symmetric instability means it is zonally zonal scale is very large, and that zonally large scale vertical uh, it produces a large vertical motion on an organized scale, and that vertical motion then uh, uh, then breaks the barrier and uh, produces, uh, 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 invigorates the ITCC and produces deep convection. Once that barrier is broken and deep convection releases latent, uh, latent heat and, and therefore a lot of potential energy is already, already available in the atmosphere. And once it is broken, so it releases the latent heat and then more uh, convergence takes place and then it sustains itself. So, that breaking is required uh, for to break this barrier and instability is required and that instability happens uh, only when uh, these, uh, the uh, the uh, the absolute vorticity uh, zero of the absolute vorticity the uh, becomes uh, goes to the not uh, for that instability to take place and that is absolute vorticity zero can happen only if there is a cyclonic vorticity to the not in the free, uh, above the boundary layer and that is when the uh, tropospheric temperature uh, goes to the north. Once tropospheric temperature goes to the north, the cyclonic vorticity, the cyclonic vorticity becomes a, a, a positive to the north, positive to the north. And, uh, and at that, that makes it uh, the, the, the absolute vorticity uh, 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 zero to the north. Uh, so this condition is, uh, 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 and that uh, 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 that, uh, that is that is the subsidence that I was talking about, and uh, this has to be broken, and that is, uh, uh, is is this is what the sequence of events that happens, sequence of events uh, 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 that takes place. So uh, that I just mentioned, uh, uh, and once that is uh, broken. Uh, the onset takes place. So ITCC becomes vigorous, uh, not of five degrees not, and then, then a, a, a feedback uh, between convection uh, uh, and, and the circulation can make it move northward. So, uh, uh, and this feedback is related to, uh, uh, so suppose you have the ITCC here, now it has become, uh, become uh, uh, vigorous now. Uh, now there is a lot of convective heating there, a uh, deep heating taking place. And once that happens, uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the convective feedback can then make it not. And how does it happen? This, this was uh, 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 discussed by, uh, uh, by Jiang et al. They have uh, proposed a, a simple theory, which uh, shows that now, if you have a heating associated with uh, uh, deep convection, so which is a baroclinic, uh, 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 baroclinic structure, it has a low level conversion, upper level divergence. If this kind of a heating is introduced in the, uh, uh, in, the, uh, in, the, in the presence of a easterly CR, this heating can produce a barotropic response. Uh, and uh, a, 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 so basically the response of the heating has, has a two component, one the barotropic part and the baroclinic part. So the barotropic part, uh, uh, of the vorticity, barotropic vorticity, that it produces in the presence of a uh, sterile CR, it produces a anomalous barotropic vorticity response to the north of the original heat source. And once this is due to the, the structure of the, uh, the, the mean flow and the response of, uh, of the heating uh, uh, together produces an anomalous barotropic vorticity to the north of the heat source. And if there is a barotropic uh, um, vorticity, this vorticity will produce through boundary layer uh, Ekman uh, um, uh, flow interacting with the Ekman process. Uh, it produces Ekman convergence, uh, which will then produce more moisture convergence to the north uh, be behind it and bring the heat source to the north. So in this, yes. Can you explain what is barotropic vorticity? Okay. What is Ekman? Okay, okay. So, uh, so the barotropic vorticity is the vorticity is the same. Uh, so, so uh, uh, has the same sign throughout the 
uh, throughout the troposphere. And baroclinic is vorticity is upper level. There is a baroclinic vorticity will be upper level cyclonic or anticyclonic lower level cyclonic. So that will be kind of baroclinic vorticity structure. But so the, uh, the resultant response is a combination of these two. Now, what is ECMAN is, is uh, what is the boundary layer? Now, uh, in the boundary layer, there is this friction. The friction in the presence of rotation produces a, a, a turning of the winds uh, away from a sort of uh, at an angle to the uh, isobars. So if uh, 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 that turning can give rise to cross isobaric flow and that uh, cross isobaric flow can uh, lead, to, uh, lead to convergence and divergence. So that, so the Ekman is, is, is essentially a frictional force in the presence of uh, uh, rotation they can produce, if there is a cyclonic vorticity on the top of the boundary layer, that cyclonic vorticity can give rise to convergence in the boundary layer uh, through these Ekman processes. And if there is a barotropic vorticity means throughout the atmosphere, there is a cyclonic vorticity, the cyclonic vorticity then tries to produce a convergence in the boundary layer, that convergence of boundary layer produces more moisture convergence to that region. And that moisture convergence will further lead to convection and heating. Therefore, the heat source can then move from the original position to a position to the north. And that is what can make the heat source. And again, this point is established, the atmosphere will respond to it, again produce a barotropic vorticity response, uh, cyclonic vorticity response to the north, uh, and that will produce moisture convergence to the north, and then again it will go to the north. And like that, it can uh, move to the north. That is the, uh, that is the mechanism of northward propagation of the ITCG on a subseasonal time scale. And that is exactly what happens after the onset. Onset within a period of about a month, uh, the ITCG then starts moving forward uh, uh, gradually. And in about a month, it gets established throughout this country. And that is exactly what happens uh, uh, through this. And that is why the easterly shear is also important. And that is why I said that the easterly shear, it gets set up if the deep heat source is set up. If deep heat source is set up, that is why I have uh, I mentioned in some other, uh, some places the uh, uh, the easterly shear I plotted here. The easterly shear also became about 20, 20 meters per second around the time of onset. When the easterly shear becomes large, the response of this uh, uh, the uh, uh, the, uh, the heat heating uh, uh, produces this kind of a feedback, which can then uh, and this becomes large because the heat source has become deep heat source has has been established and there is a upper level divergence that has taken place already. And that will then produce uh, the, uh, uh, that, uh, the, uh, the larger uh, Istalis here. Um, okay, one. Um, so, so there is a mechanism by which then after onset it can move to the north. So therefore this is consistent. Now the, our, uh, our theory tells us that onset can take place abruptly due to this instability and um, which is connected to the north, north, uh, northward establishment of the heat source. And once that happens, then the instability can produce the onset, onset can break the barrier, then it can start propagating to the north. So it's, everything uh, becomes sort of closed in some sense. But there is certain criticism over this model. Uh, mm, uh, one of the criticism is, of course, is that uh, uh, this can take place. This is only a model for uh, for uh, 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 what did I say here? Uh, uh, At the time, I was said no rain over the land. So one of the critic, one of the criticism is that, or the, some of the people say that okay, the rainfall pro, uh, rainfall is also affects the TT. Now, if rainfall affects the TT, how can we how can we say that the the, the onset uh, uh, how can we use it as, uh, as 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 the TT gradient as the driver of the rainfall? So this is actually a good a good question. Uh, uh, um, uh, so. Uh, but the point is that uh, the, the way it happens is that the onset process does not have any rainfall associated with this. Uh, ITCG is not formed yet. The onset takes place completely due to dry, st uh, the dry static energy. Uh, is essentially heating of the land, uh, heating of the uh, um, uh, Tibetan Plateau, and 
whatever the uh, tropospheric temperature uh, uh, advection that might have taken place from ectotropics, these affects the onset. So if onset is not affected by a uh, rainfall, then uh, essentially, uh, uh, not, uh, not, uh, uh, onset is not affected by the monsoon rainfall itself, but the TT uh, to, uh, during the season is affected by monsoon, uh, monsoon rainfall. So what happens is that, uh, 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 that, uh, 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 that once the large scale external forcing sets up the onset condition, uh, suppose the onset is 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 considered considered to be delayed. So monsoon is then then expected to be weaker. Then the monsoon itself will be weaker, and therefore uh, then it will ha it will add uh, less uh, less rain during the season, and therefore affect the, mon uh, the seasonal uh, tropospheric temperature uh, 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 value also, and therefore uh, uh, therefore. Uh, it will be still related to the tropospheric temperature gradient, it will be still related to the seasonal mean monsoon rainfall. Uh, so therefore, even average over the season, the tropospheric temperature gradient can be, uh, can be, uh, can be uh, related to the monsoon rainfall because rainfall is contributes to it. So therefore, it, uh, it does not, uh, does not uh, even though this is, uh, is a bit of a diagnostic uh, effect, it still serves as a good uh, tool to, to look at the monsoon season and, and, and also relate to the monsoon rainfall itself. Uh, but there is, there is other, other, other uh, criticism of the model is of course, this monsoon onset by this method, uh, the tropospheric temperature gradient can only, only uh, 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 define the onset over Kerala or the first onset. Uh, mm, uh, that is because after this is in, uh, the, the monsoon, uh, 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 so this whole uh, heat source, once it is established, it continues over the, over the whole period. So therefore I cannot, uh, uh, um, use the heat source again to define uh, uh, onset at interior point. So it is good for onset over Kerala, uh, um, but it is not possible to use this model to define onset in, in the interior places. So, so this is one uh, one drawback, which is actually is, is fine. Uh, but also it has a strength is because because of the large scale uh, the uh, the. Uh, the uh, because of the uh, uh, the tropospheric temperature being a very smooth and large scale uh, uh, variable, uh, 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 the variations are rather smooth, not abrupt like temperature uh, like the precipitation, and therefore some uh, uh, the precipitation based mod, uh, 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 definitions of uh, onset has a lot of something called buga sunset. Sometimes it, uh, weather disturbances can, uh, uh, like uh, uh, like uh, uh, Dr. Narasimha mentioned, that sometimes the tropical cyclones uh, can give a, 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 or, a, a lot of rain, a persistent rain for about, weather system can give a persistent rain over Kerala for five days or more, and the winds have also uh, whole, whole strengthened. So you can define an onset, but then, the ITCG has not really be, uh, has become in, uh, rigorous. Uh, and then after that, the onset, uh, the ITCG will not move. Uh, and therefore, the, it will be a buga sunset. So there's this problem of buga sunset if you use rainfall alone. But the tropospheric temperature uh, reduces that risk uh, uh, to, to, to a great extent. Uh, uh, so there are other methods by which the length of the rainy season can be defined from uh, uh, from uh, uh, from rainfall uh, rainfall uh, or, uh, or or vertically integrated uh, moisture transport and these uh, these are these are these are used for interior uh, it can be once you use only rainfall then you can you can use even inside the country and people do use IMD also has a uh, has a, has a methodology by which they define Unfortunately, it is not very clear how it is done, uh, but uh, uh, but there are methods uh, like the Mishra, uh, the Basubandhu uh, Mishra. They um, they define by using the cumulative an rainfall normally uh, from the uh, from uh, uh, January onwards, and then by changing their uh, uh, characters, of, uh, uh, you know, at a certain point you can define uh, um, uh, the onset based on that, which seems to be. Uh, reasonable and that uh, 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 that however shows that there are there are the onset uh, the length of the rainy season is rather, rather long in the east and rather short which is our which is which you know 
in the east, east, uh, western part, the, 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 region, uh, the, the onset takes place late, monsoon withdraws early, and therefore the length of the rainy season is uh, uh, short. Here, the length of the rainy season is long, and, but it sometimes mixes up this kind of methodology, cannot distinguish between oh, what is northeast rainfall monsoon and what is southwest rainfall monsoon, and therefore sometimes we find length of the rainy season here too long. Uh, of the summer monsoon itself. Uh, so, so, uh, uh, so, uh, so, uh, uh, so we need to have a, 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 special, a special mechanism to define uh, a sort of special attention to be paid towards the Northeast region. I find that uh, the Northeast rainfall, there is no, the IMD definition of Northeast onset is in third of May. And I feel that that is not quite correct because uh, the monsoon tends to take place earlier than that, but there is no clear, uh, uh, clear mechanism of how to define that. We found that the tropospheric temperature can actually can do that job. And, uh, and why it needs to be defined, redefined, because if you see the Northeast annual cycle of the rainfall over the Northeast, it's a very big heat source. Uh, even though the region is relatively small compared to the whole country, but this actually contributes uh, a large, almost a, more than 10% of the total rain. And, uh, and, uh, and it is, look at the annual cycle. This is the Central India annual cycle. So in the, in the month of May, in the month of May, notice there is rain which is large, uh, larger than the zone in Central India. So therefore, can we call this, uh, uh, I think there is a need to explore whether this is associated with the northeast uh, monsoon, and, uh, and 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 this is uh, from different uh, different data sets we have seen. This is from TMI. This is ERA. This is our northeast, uh, our own data set, which indicates that this is the uh, annual cycle of uh, mm, uh, rainfall. So we actually looked at whether we can actually consider these you know, May rainfall as. Uh, 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 May rainfall is possibly associated with monsoon. How do we define monsoon? As, as I defined that if the heat source, the large scale heat source moves to the north and the winds at the above the boundary layer are produced by this heat source, then we should call it a monsoon. And then, uh, and, and in fact, May, there is a, 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 the, the, the 850 millibar, the winds are uh, southwesterly, and there is a considerable amount of rain in the climatologically. So therefore, there is a need to re-examine this. And, and we feel this is because in the month northeast, the rainfall need not come from the IPCC because there is orography. As, as soon as you can produce the low level winds, which are southwesterly, that is sufficient and the orography will do the job. You don't need an instability to break the barrier. There is subsidence. There is subsidence, but the subsidence is broken by the orography. And therefore, on the large scale heat source can still take place. And that, uh, and, uh, that is what we looked at uh, uh, recently. So if we define uh, the onset, uh, 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 look at the heat source in this region, not over the whole region. Uh, the, so what happens to the heat source in the Northeast? If the heat source in the Northeast becomes a, uh, positive, then uh, compared to the south. Uh, so we plotted this climatological position of the uh, tropospheric temperature gradient uh, in this region. It turns out that it crosses uh, uh, zero around 12th of May. So I would imagine that we can define somewhere around 12th of May, maybe around two, two, three, three, two, 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 three days after that, uh, we can define uh, uh, the monsoon onset in this region. Uh, in fact, this year it has been very strange, and 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 uh, and uh, the monsoon seem to have uh, 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 southwest monsoon seem to have taken place much earlier. Uh, in fact, there was a uh, in the April itself there was a big spell of rain, uh, and there is a there is a, there is a, there is a, uh, a good spell in in May. And this April spell was possibly responsible for filling up the dams because this happened in the uh, in the in the in the catchment areas uh, in the sub Himalayan regions uh, and the dams were full. And when the second spell came in May, 
the dams overflowed and there were the, and this huge flood which is unprecedented happened in the in the northeast this year uh, and uh, uh, and uh, so so this the question is do we call all these uh, spells uh, pre monsoon rain only so i feel that uh, uh, it is not mm, and uh, and we looked at the notice that from the onset uh, from this uh, 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 from this uh, uh, um, uh, troposphere temperature of this year again from those era five and the current data uh, if you look at actually it crossed the troposphere temperature crossed uh, to the positive early early on in the uh, in that during that spell uh, early spell but it did not sustain it was a short and uh, but then again on 6th of may it crossed and now it is sustaining so i think it is time that we can um, we can uh, we can uh, actually uh, 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 declare onset over the northeast region so uh, to uh, coming back to the question of uh, what is the role of the tibetan plateau um, uh, somebody asked me now so so this is uh, let me uh, try to conclude by just uh, making a couple of points uh, on this uh, so, um, Tibetan plateau is actually affects the monsoon in two different ways. One, it, it has a, it has a mechanical effect. Mechanical effect is uh, is is because these tall mountains prevents the cold and dry air at low level to come from the extra tropical. Extra tropical waves have big swings. These extra tropical uh, weather, um, what we call western disturbances, uh, and these. Uh, these uh, uh, these extra tropical waves can bring in cold uh, cold and dry air from uh, the north and uh, and and uh, and that can affect the moisturetic energy in this region and the moisturetic energy if it is very low then the convection will not sustain so during monsoon time it prevents such cold air from coming and affecting the low level moisturetic energy to become low and therefore monsoon can remain uh, remain uh, remain active during uh, uh, if it was not there, there will be events. Uh, uh, then, uh, uh, then, um, uh, uh, then uh, uh, during time there are many events when the the cold and dry air will come and the monsoon convection will be inhibited. Uh, uh, other effect uh, that, uh, that 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 it does is the elevated. Uh, the other effect is the thermal effect. So, the it also acts like uh, as I said, the Tibetan plateau has a elevated land. Therefore, it heats up that land. Therefore, compared to the South region, um, this is this becomes much hotter. Therefore, the tropospheric temperature uh, uh, becomes hotter. Uh, and uh, uh, I uh, I do not uh, 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 agree completely with uh, the, the the work of Booz because they think that the thermal effect is not important. But there is a debate that is going on. There are several people who think that that is not correct. Uh, thermal effect is still very, very important because thermal effect is important in terms of creating the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the season, the length of the season. If, this, if the Himalayas are not there, the model, uh, the, uh, what will happen is that the, it will take much longer time for the land to heat up so much that it will start producing convection by itself. Okay, and the and ITCG could should be maintained. So uh, it it will actually take much longer, about a month longer, uh, to, for onset to take place. Therefore, season will be shorter. Therefore, the monsoon season season will be like, like three months. Uh, um, or less. And as a result, the rainfall amount will also be less, therefore monsoon will be weaker. So that way, uh, the, um, uh, the, the Tibetan uh, plateau has a longer month and modeling studies do support that. Uh, and, and many modeling studies have shown that. And uh, so uh, the, the thermal effect is important in terms of creating the onset, early, early onset. Uh, if it, uh, so that way, it still has an impo important effect uh, on monsoon. Mm. Uh, but uh, the mechanical effect is 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 is, is very important, uh, very very important because without that, also uh, the monsoon will not produce uh, a, a enough convection in this region because of the cold air. And in fact, uh, and then the cold air advection can tell there is a, there is a little break in this region, in the Kush region, and that uh, brings in. Uh, 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 extra tropical system sometimes towards our region and that affects our weather. And so 
uh, it does have an important effect, but uh, but I think uh, 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 in fact uh, uh, the, the Tibetan plateau has an has a, has a very important Tibetan plateau as well as the, uh, 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 as, a, uh, as the as the Himalayas. Himalayas to the south are much taller, so this goes up to about uh, seven eight kilometers. But but the Tibetan plateau is about five five kilo, four kilometers, right? So this is affects as a bigger barrier for uh, the mechanical effect. Uh, and that is important, uh, uh, the Himalayas are important for that. Uh, so uh, now this question, how important the Himalayas has, has, been, a, has been a, in terms of uh, making the monsoon strong, uh, the monsoon, the current monsoon is considered to be in the, in the, in the, uh, in, in, in the paleoclimatic sense, it is, it is the strongest that we know. Uh, and this seem to have the strengthening of the monsoon seem to have happened when the, uh, the, mon the Himalayas uh, and the Tibetan plateau and Himalayas uh, um, established them. And that happened around 20 to 23 million years ago. Uh, uh, however, uh, so, uh, but, but paleo records of the ocean, uh, which uh, depends on the winds, uh, they seem to show that the winds become strong uh, only around uh, uh, in the late Miocene, about 13 million years ago. So that means that there is a dichotomy between these, uh, uh, these uh, results. And this has been a very serious, important science question for a long time. Uh, oh, uh, with, uh, with, uh, the monsoon, uh, the, uh, the Himalayas became established uh, around 20, 23 million years ago. The monsoon should have been strong by that time, but the wind records uh, show uh, the wind became stronger. The stronger wind produced uh, larger upwelling. Larger upwelling has uh, has produces a certain uh, uh, ocean dwelling uh, foraminiferas, and those in, uh, so that they become abundant uh, uh, around uh, around uh, this time. So it appears that monsoon had uh, had strengthened at this time. So this was a bit uh, this, uh, reconciling this discrepancy was a major uh, open science question for a long time. A recent uh, study, a very recent study, in, the, in fact, last month, uh, uh, a study, uh, this study has uh, seemed to have resolved this question. And uh, uh, this is a, uh, this is a important, I believe that this is a very important study, which showed it uses the art system model uh, with a biogeochemical bio model. So they did some transient uh, experiments for about 20, 25, uh, uh, 2,500 years uh, um, during, uh, for early Miocene and uh, late Miocene, uh, around 20 million years ago, around 13 million years ago. So, uh, uh, and then they used the paleogeography during those two periods uh, correctly. And uh, then they did several sensitivity studies to find out what they found is that during monsoon, uh, during uh, mm, during early Miocene, when the uh, uh, Tibetan plateau and Himalayas got established, the monsoon uh, monsoon became strong, but monsoon precipitation became strong, but the winds were still weak. So, so the precipitation and the winds are not simultaneously became strong. So what happened is that then when they did this other experiment uh, where the, uh, the mountains on these regions uh, uh, were uh, not available at that time. So now you have, these mountains have come up. Once these mountains have come up, the winds have now become much stronger here. And now that means it is, it, the, uh, this is what I mentioned one uh, sometime in the beginning that these way, uh, mountains are crucial in producing, accelerating, and the uh, winds in this region, uh, sort of producing the low level western jet uh, through an western boundary intensification kind of thing. So these winds, uh, well, these winds are just like a response of this uh, gill model. So the monsoon heat source is there and that heat source will produce monsoon and those monsoon winds will not be very strong because uh, the gill model, will, uh, the rainfall will be strong here, around it the monsoon rains will go. But then it might be very strong uh, uh, like this, uh, like the Z here. And that Z has come because of these mountains. And so this is uh, uh, an important, uh, important understanding. I think now it's clear that, that uh, 
the defectors uh, forcing this outage and monsoon circulation versus rainfall are kind of decoupled in uh, diachronous. Uh, so although elevated rainfall seasonality was probably persistent uh, feature since Asia, India Asia collision the Paleogene, modern like monsoon atmospheric circulation only emerged in the late Neogene. Circulation emerged only. So it is not, a, a, there is no discrepancy between observations that people found, um, uh, uh, but it was our, uh, our, our understanding that was uh, what caused the intensification of the ray, uh, winds were not uh, well understood until now. I think now it is uh, uh, better. With that, I think uh, I'll stop.